Uh, hello, I'm Jay Jermaine Bay. I am the chief judge, which means Kazi. Kazi means judge for Elodium Morris Pradium, Auntie Colorado. The acronym is MPAC. We are a state provincial government within the Moroccan Empire. All right. So today um, we'll be continuing continuing with the subject matter of what's called how did the Moors lose their land. So today is part five. Now, keep in mind, in part four, we talked about the Enemy, Enemy Alien Act of 1798. And what did we learn? We learned through, through an act of Congress, right? So we keep talking about the pit. What did the colonists do? What did the colonists do? They wrote, they wrote out of history, yes. The colonists wrote us out of history with the pit, yes. right? and labeled us as aliens, denizens, subjects, etc. right? And the contemporary terms now is Negro, Black, Colored, Minority, African American, right? So what we have to understand and always keep in mind that there's a feud going on. And a feud is with a pen as well as with military arms. So therefore, the colonists, who are chiefly British, are warring with the Moors. Moors being the Moroccans. Moroccans come from Morocco. So Britain, Britain, is warring with Morocco. Keeping in mind that Morocco is an empire. Morocco expands all around the world because the indigenous, autochthonous, aboriginal, original people are the Moabite, Canaanite people. Moabite is just another word for more. Moabite, more. And that has now turned into more rockin, more rich. Understanding that Moorish is like saying Britain, British, Ireland, Irish. So Moorish is just like describing the person from the land they come from, the state that they come from, the country they come from. So we as Moroccans come from Morocco, but we're also referred to as Moors, making us Moorish. Okay? So all these things are about nationality. So the great people in Great Britain call themselves the British. So what's happening? There's a feud. Feud with who? The Moors. So feud, feudal law. Feud is compound word, feudal. Feud with the owls. Who are the owls? The owls are the Moors. The owls are the Moroccans. The owls come from Morocco, the empire. Today we'll talk about that a little bit more. But we always must understand law and history. When you understand history, you start to understand how did you find yourself in the position you are in today calling yourself black, negro, Hispanic, and any other non bigger name that they give you because Hispanic is not a state. Hispanic is not a nationality. There is no state on planet Earth called Hispanic. So they label people with all types of non years and people all of a sudden take that on as a brand, not knowing that they're now denationalizing themselves. You ask somebody, hey, what's your nationality? They say Hispanic. There's no Hispanic country. That's what's like asking somebody from Asia, hey, uh, what's your nationality? Oh, I'm yellow. There's no yellow state. There's no yellow country. There's no yellow nationality. So with Hispanics, and blacks say that these brands is how they identify with themselves. They immediately tell the world that they're incompetent, that they don't have a nationality, which means immediately in law, you are a stateless person, which means you became a ward of the state, and now you are officially what you call a denizen or a subject. That is law. That is the truth. So today we'll continue to understand the fundamentals 
of understanding what is this feud going on of acts of Congress. Studying history, we'll study law. Then we'll also understand by pointing out the problem, what's the solution? As I'll continue to talk about, what is the solution? The solution is proclaiming your nationality and then putting together a constitution and a state that outlines your latitude, longitude. And from there, you start to put together your offices through that constitution that have your elected officials that represents the flag and the seal of your nation, of your state. Consular court, birth records, a lodial land claim. A lodial land claim, national trust. Most importantly, your matriarchal council. Most importantly, your matriarchal council. Because Moors have to understand that if the women are not in control ruling legislation with the pen, then we're doomed to repeat the same history again. The women must have the pen. And the son's job is to protect that pen. Don't get me wrong, will sons help the mothers to scribe law? Yes, because we are a community. But the mother, everything is the beginning of the mother, and the mother is the end. She's the beginning and end of everything. That's Alpha and Omega. If you do not have a matriarchal council, what is a matriarchal council? Nothing but a body of women that sit at a round table of no more than 13 matriarchs. The number 13, which is the lunar cycles of the moon around the planet. 13 cycles. 13 cycles. So therefore, you want to have a matriarchal council of 13 women. The head mother is called the Seya Raha. The other 12 women are the associates of the matriarchal council. They are the legislators in your government. Then you have your judicial branch, which is your judges. Then you've got your executive branch, which is your prime minister, it's called the wazir, W-A-Z-I-R, then your deputy wazir. Those are your three branches of government, so therefore the women are the legislators with the pen. The executive branch, which is your wazir, get with the matriarchal council, matriarchal council creates the legislation, and the wazir signs it into law. The judge, like me, I'm the Kazi, the judge, job is to enforce said law, to interpret said law. Those are three branches of government. So today we'll keep talking about problems based upon what the colonists did with a pen, and we'll talk about solutions as to what we do as Moors to start to now be in proper alignment with the United Nations and the other league of nations around the world based upon Rotarian laws of the world. What does Rotarian mean? It means around the world. These are what you call well-settled principles of international law, i.e. the instructions that Moors haven't been following. But we'll start following it now because we recognize the instructions. All right? So let's get right into subject matter, okay? Today... What we'll do is we'll pick off on what we did, pick up from what we did on uh, what we talked about in session four. Today is part five. In session four, we talked about the Alien Enemy Act, right? Mm -hmm. So today, we'll pick up on where we left off on, talking about nationality. Because without you proclaiming your nationality, you can't ever create a state or a constitution, okay? Now, I know I've talked a lot about black people, African Americans, minorities, etc., as being a non big year, a brand. Today, let's take a look at a reference point to let you know immediately how the definition of black is determined in what's called the Etymology Dictionary. Etymology Dictionary. The Etymology Dictionary 
means the origin of words, the beginning of words. It means it's the mother, it's the mother book. Where the words were invented and created based upon its proper usage. So today we'll read the definition of black in the etymology dictionary, Oxford etymology dictionary. All right? So it's always good to have a mother's to read. So I have the mothers to read the etymology dictionary, Oxford, all right, uh, page 97, okay, mother? If I need you to read this loud and clear, that would be great. Page 97. <clears throat> Black, absorbing all light. O-H-G, Old High German. Black has superseded swart in general, used as color name. Black Amor, Ethiopian, Negro, Black Amor, Seymour, Nigger, Black, Black Death, Worthless Character, Swindler. 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 All right. Thank you, Mother, for reading that. All right, so if you don't mind, I'll take that from your mother, and I'll, and I'll go in and do my interpretations in the strict sense. So, etymology dictionary. My etymology dictionary is a little beat up, so you have to excuse me. To, I, I read a lot. <laughs> All right. So, okay, page 97 in my concise ex Oxford dictionary, page 97. All right. So let's read it for the viewers at home. Black, absorbing, absorbing all light. What does that mean? It means one of two things. Absorbing all light. It's just like going to the bottom of the ocean. The further you go down, the ocean at some point absorbs the light. And therefore, there is no more light. It absorbs the light. But the second thing you must understand about why they put that here is, Light also means knowledge. Listen. Enlightenment. Enlightenment. So therefore, you must have enlightenment. You must have knowledge. You must absorb knowledge. Okay? Let's continue. O High German, OHG, which is the etymology understanding. The origin of where the word black came from, it came from Old High German, which in its original form means pale. We'll talk about that another day. Let's continue. Black has superseded swarth, in general use, a color name. So in the definition of black, in etymology, black is a color name. So we learned in session one and two, the definition of color means fake. It means to conceal. It means to hide. Hide what? The true identity of the people who go under the nom de gear of black. So therefore, black is what you call a generic term because it's not the original term. So what's the original term or identity of the indigenous people? It is more. They're going to tell you that right here. They continue to tell you. It goes on to say, Black a more. Black a more. Black a more. It's right here in the dictionary. Black a more. So these people are called some black in the etymology dictionary. Actually, Morse. M O O R S. Morse, plural. Then it continues to say Ethiopian. Ethiopians are Moors. It says Negro. Negro, black and colored. Negroes are Moors. Then it continues to say Black, Moor. Then it says C Moor, capital M O O R, C Moor. So these people are going to numb the gear black as it relates to the etymology dictionary. It says 
more. So you must understand, when I stand here and say that these people who call themselves black are actually Moors, guess who wrote the book? A hybrid European that goes by the number year white is trying to tell you your true identity, that you are a Moor. Anybody call themselves black is a Moor. Anybody call themselves Negro? is a more. Anybody that calls himself colored is a more. Anybody that calls themselves African American is a more. Anybody that calls himself an Indian is a more. Reference point. So for people out there who think they're black, that's your choice. Look it up. But here's the deal. The colleges know that black people don't like to read. Because they didn't even realize to even look up the definition of black. How many people have ever taken the time to look up the definition of black, but yet they took it on as identity, never looked up the word? Black is an adjective, which means it is not a noun. A noun is people. 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 And I'm going to do a thing here. Me too. Reference point. Let's continue. Now, in part five, let's continue to show long history of what the colonists, who are chiefly British, did with a pen. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some legislation based upon what was discussed on the House of Representatives. So let's take a look at the reference point. For the viewers at home, um, you're going to stay, you're going to go to uh, what's called the Citizenship of the United States, Expatriation, and Protections Abroad, the year 1906. All right? So as you can see, I have it written on the board. Citizenship of the United States, Expatriation, Protections Abroad, year 1906. Then you're going to go down to page 459 through 460, and the header is going to say Morocco. So when you get to page 459, Scroll down and you'll see Morocco. Okay? So we're going to read this so that you can continuously see what these people who call themselves white, these people who call themselves American, what they know about your true identity that they hide from you under the definition of color. Color of law, color of authority, color of title, color of office. I'm going to prove to you they know exactly who you are. So this is one of their acts of Congress. All right, so if you really want to know exactly what this is, which document this is. All right. So this document is what you call 59th Congress, Second Session, year 1906. 59th Congress. Second session, citizenship of the United States, expatriation, and protections abroad. Letter from the Secretary of State. Who state? The United States of America. All right? So now we're going to go to page 459. We're going to scroll down. To Morocco. Morocco. Mr. Philip charged affairs to Mr. Root, Secretary of State, August 3, 1906. Stop. So who is Mr. Philip? Mr. Philip, his real name is William William Philip. He's an ambassador. He's talking to Mr. Root, the Secretary of State. All right, so you got to understand who's the Secretary of State. Secretary of State is like when Obama was president, he had Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State. When Trump was president, he had Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State. Okay, so here, Mr. Root is the Secretary of State in the year 1906, and the ambassador is giving him a report. Okay, continue, Mom. On August 3, 1906, 
American Legation, Tangier, August 3, 1906. So where are they right now? They're giving you location. Tangier. Where's Tangier located? In Morocco. In the kingdom of Morocco in Africa. Tangier is right on what you call the coastal line that's about 17 miles away from what they call contemporarily Spain. So Morocco, the tip of Morocco and Spain are only 17 miles apart. All right? So Tangier is just that little tip. It's almost like a peninsula in itself sticking off the kingdom of Morocco. Okay? But you must understand the big difference between a kingdom and an empire. We'll talk about that. All right? Okay, continue, Mo. Sir, there are, strictly speaking, no Moroccan laws relating to citizenship of Mo Moorish subjects in Morocco. The fundamental laws of this non-Christian country are based entirely upon the Islamic code, no part of which treats of the subject of citizenship. There are, however, numerous treaties and conventions between the various Christian countries and the Moorish Empire by means of which citizenship in this country is defined. But as I understand from the above acknowledged instructions that it is not the desire of the department to call for a, re a report upon such lines, I will therefore confine these remarks to general conditions existing which may possibly be of some use in connection with the information desired. Stop. Okay. Thank you, Mother. Let's go back and get an understanding of what we just read. Okay, so, so there's a lot of keys here. So now we're going to go back to the beginning. All right. So let's break it down. Sir, there are, strictly speaking, no Moroccan laws related to citizenship of Moorish subjects in Morocco. So first thing I want you to get an understanding in this first sentence they say that no Moroccan laws related to citizenship of Moorish subjects in Morocco. Moroccan and Moorish is synonymous. People who are Moroccans are Moorish, which means Moroccans are Moors. They're synonymous of Morocco. So someone from Morocco is a Moor. Someone from Morocco is Moorish. You must understand that as you continue to read this text. Okay? Continuing. The fundamental laws of this non-Christian country are based entirely upon the Islamic code, no part of which treats of the subject of citizenship. Well, wait a minute. The colonists know that Morocco is not based in Christianity. It turns around and says it's based entirely upon an Islamic code. What is an Islamic code? Let me explain. Islamic code has nothing to do with religion. It has everything to do with honoring mothers and Mother Earth. Listen. Islamic code is an acronym for I, Self, Law, Am, Master. It's an acronym. I, self, law, am master. See, in law, you must be responsible for yourself. You know how you get on a plane, they say, first thing you do in a case of emergency, put the mask on yourself before you help others. So in Islam is about mastering self. Because people perish by the day for lack of knowledge of self. So you're responsible to govern your own affairs of you first. Islam is about mastering self-discipline. That's what I, self, law, and master means. It has nothing to do with religion. Let's continue. It also points out in the second sentence, there's no part of which treats of the subject of citizenship. Moors don't have the word citizenship described in their laws. Either you're a national or you're a subject. Because there's no such thing as aliens on planet Earth. Everybody has a nationality. There's no aliens in the Moorish 
laws, the Moroccan laws, no aliens. Because Moors, in order to say somebody's an alien, that means that we call ourselves an alien because all human beings came from the Moors. We're the original people of the planet. The copper hue people. So we can't call our child an alien when the mother's not an alien. So therefore, either you're a national or you're a subject. That's it. Let's continue. So keep in mind now, this is the United States of America on the, at the House of Representatives talking about Moors. Watch this. There are, however, numerous treaties and conventions between the various Christian countries and the Moorish Empire by means of which citizenship in this country is defined. Wait a minute. It says a Moorish Empire that's got treaties and conventions. We learned in the 1798 Enemy Aliens Act, John Adams admitted on the record there are some treaties. Here we go in 1906, they're still talking about these treaties, which is the contract between these people that call themselves the United States of America citizens who are chiefly British and Moors. So he's pointing out the treaties, which are obligations. But now, guess what they're doing? They're pointing out the other party to the contract. They're naming it. Moors is the other party. You follow me? Watch this. But they also say it's a Moorish empire. A Moorish empire. Wait a minute, what is an empire? So you must understand the difference between a country and an empire. I'll give you an example. United States of America, which is a corporation that's claiming a false jurisdiction under what's called extraterritorial Jurisdiction. Extraterritorial means you've been colonized. You've been conquered. That's what extraterritorial means. Okay? Here's what's happening. You must understand the United States of America, using that example, they will consider the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C., really what's called the kingdom. And the United States of America Corporation will consider the other 50 states of North America as their empire, plus all the surrounding islands that they have claimed under colonialism, such as Puerto Rico, such as Hawaii, such as Alaska, Guam, etc. That's a part of their so-called empire. So an empire is vast. It can, it can span across continents. It can cross continents. So Morocco's empire is the continent of America, which is really a Mexum, that spans all the way over to Africa. Africa is really a Kibalon. All the way up into Asia, Asia, as well as going up into Europe, which is really Iberia. That's why they call it the Iberian Peninsula. Well, how can it be an Iberian Peninsula if there's no Iberian land. We'll talk about that another day. So therefore, right here, as soon as they say Moorish Empire, they're not talking about that little Tangier little peninsula they stand on in Morocco. They're talking about the vast empire that spans from the continent of America and the continent of Africa, Asia, and up in Europe, and all the surrounding islands around the world. That's the Moroccan Empire. That is the truth. But let's keep it simple. We'll stick to Northwest of Mexico, which is North America. We'll stick to North Africa, which is Morocco, Algiers, Libya, Egypt, etc. Which now you're talking about going into the Ottoman Empire, but the Ottomans married into the Moroccan bloodline. We'll talk about that another day. So therefore, you must understand empire means it's vast. I'll give you another example. Great Britain, who colonized the world. What is their so-called kingdom? That little island called London, England. But they claiming all of North America, United States, Canada, Iceland, I think it's Newfoundland, no, it's Greenland, Greenland and Iceland. 
What else are they claiming? Australia? They're claiming all types of lands all around the world under extraterritorial jurisdiction. Even in China, Hong Kong is a settlement colonized by the British. So therefore, the British kingdom is that small island, but their empire expands over continents. Let's continue. From the top. There are, however, numerous treaties and conventions between the various Christian countries and the Moorish Empire, by means of which citizenship in this country is defined. But, as I understand from the above acknowledged instructions, that it is not the desire of the department, what department? The United States of America, to call for a report upon such lines. What is it, what's happening here? The United States don't want to talk about Moors. Why don't they want to talk about Moors and Moorish? Because these people who call themselves Negro, Black, and Colored, African American, minorities, etc., 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 are really the Moors. So they want to stay hush lip. But they still got to do a report. But they got to do the report almost in a, de in a deceitful way because they don't want to give up too many details. You got to catch what's happening immediately. They said on the record, I was given instructions not to really go into the subject matter in detail. I got to keep it simple. Watch what he says. Let's take it from the top where it says, I understand. I understand from the above acknowledged instructions that it is not the desire of a State Department to call for a report upon, upon such lines. I will therefore confine, confine means to condense, these remarks to general conditions existing, which may be possi possibly be some use in connection with the information desired. So immediately, as we can see, there's some secret language going on. They're talking cold to each other. Don't talk about these Moors too loud. Well, why not? Aren't y'all over there in so-called Kingdom of Morocco in Africa? Why y'all don't want to talk about Moors? Oh, because the Moors expand around the world, especially in what's called modern-day United States of America, which is a private foreign corporation claiming a false jurisdiction and got these people indoctrinated to think that they are crayons. And they're keeping it quiet. Because they don't really want to talk about the parties to the contract. Right. Okay, Mother, continue from section one. One, citizenship in Morocco may be said to be governed by the laws pertaining to the same in other countries, with the exception that all persons residing in Morocco who cannot prove foreign citizenship or protection are considered ipso jure as Moorish subjects. Stop. Thank you, Mother. Let's take it from the top. <laughs> They're disclosing the secrets, finally. Number one, citizenship in Morocco may be said to be governed by the laws pertaining to the same in other countries, with the exception that all persons residing in Morocco, they talk about the Morocco of North America, who cannot prove foreign citizenship or protections are considered its sojour as Moorish subjects. Watch this. If you don't know your nationality, immediately, even the United States of America is saying, you're a Moor. You call yourself black, black is not a nationality. So, for the record, if you call yourself black, which means you don't know your nationality, even the United States of America, Foreigners, who are chiefly British, are trying to tell you your nationality is Moorish. They're British, you're Moorish. Now wait a minute, let's back up a little bit. Some of you may be asking, what is it sojour as Moorish subjects? You must understand the word ipso. Ipso means a fact in itself. Ipso means a fact in itself. What does that mean? The fact of what? 
What type of fact? A material fact. What's the material fact? As soon as they look at you and you even open your mouth, you have big nose, big lips, you got cheekbones, your complexion, your hair. They immediately know by what you call that prima facie. Just from your exterior, you don't even have to open your mouth. As soon as they look at, the, look at you, they know you're more by nationality. That's called ipso. A fact in itself. The fact is just your exterior. Okay, what about the word jur? Jur means of law. True law. Jur. A fact of law. So wait a minute, let's put this together. Ipso, meaning a material fact. Jur means fact of law. Fact of law. So it's a material fact of law as Moorish, Moors, subjects. Ipso, material fact, juror of law, that you are Moors. But what type of Moors? Subject Moors. Listen, this is why we've been going over these words leading up to this so you understand what subject means. We've been subjugated by the British these people who are commonly known as white people who have applied the word American to themselves are truly, chiefly British, have subjugated and made the Moors aliens and subjects. So right there, the United States is admitting on the record that we're the subjects. We were no longer national. We're just subject. Subject to what? Subject to the rules, regulations, statutes, and codes of the United States of America. The colonists have conquered you and given you a dog tag. And when they flip it over to see what your name is, it says Toby. It says black, negro, color, minority, African American. Everything but more. How did they do this? With a pen and usurpation, indoctrination. They changed the books during Civil War. It wasn't a reconstruction of building, they were reconstructing the books and legislation to remove you out of history because you were subjected to your adopted parent called the state of America, called the several states that you think you got a birth certificate with. Let's get back to the reading, shall we? Section two and three, if the mothers can read it, please. Okay, two and three. Moorish subjects lost their nationality only by becoming naturalized in or protected by another country having treaty relations with the Moorish Empire. Okay. It, Stop. Two, section two and three, they finally told you what they did to steal your birthright. I'll read it again. The Moorish subjects lost their nationality only by becoming naturalized. What's that? Naturalization Act, 1870. Enemy in, in, in Alien Act, 1798. Read again. More subjects lost their nationality only by becoming naturalized in or protected by another country. Who's the country? The United States of America. Having treaty relations with the Moorish Empire. So they just point out their own pride. Who got treaty relations? United States of America and Moors. They just finally pointed out the pride. Now we already read in the Etymology Dictionary who these people call themselves black? Moors. Moors have treaties with these people who call themselves white, who are chiefly British. So who are, we, who are the real parties? The British subjects 
and the Moorish subjects. But once Moors now have a constitution, a state, ratified government, consular court, flag, and seal, you're no longer subject. You just proclaimed your nationality on the record, for the record, through your state. And until then, you are still a more subject. Why do I say these people call themselves white? Are white subjects, British subjects. Why do I say they're chiefly British? Because Great Britain is their homeland. And they came over looking for asylum and refuge in Morocco. And since Sidi Mohammed allowed them to stay, they immediately became subjects. Why? Because they denounced their nationality and didn't want to be British no more. So if you ain't British, then what name you going by? I think I'll call myself settler. No, how about pilgrim? No, how about just Christians? Uh, how about white? How about we just keep it simple? American. They've had several nom de guise themselves because they don't want to be called British. But guess what? They are British nonetheless. Because Great Britain gave those British settlers permission to stay over here. After they got through fighting, they said, okay, y'all stay over there. But don't forget, you're already always British. And since you don't want to be called British, then you're just subjects of Great Britain because you still have a nationality, but you're treasonous. You ran away from home without our permission. Let's continue. I have a question, Rafael. Go ahead, Mother. Just for clarification, so anyone that comes over here from any country origin and they become a citizen of the United States, yeah. that means that they denounce their nationality and they become a subject meaning that they don't have a nationality? Okay, so it's two parts. What you must understand, that this is called expatriation, citizenship and expatriation. So therefore, a person can have a dual passport, dual nationality. Someone who comes from Italy can come over here with their nationality and get a dual passport and get permission to call themselves a United States citizen. It's called a visa. But they didn't denounce their nationality. But those who want to come from Italy and seek permanent residence, the United States of America, no longer call themselves Italian, must pledge allegiance to the United States of America. And, and their new nationality now is the United States of America. That's the nationality on the record. Don't make no damn sense. So therefore, anyone here who calls himself a citizen of the United States of America, that do not claim a nationality are automatically a subject or an alien. That is the truth. Let's continue. It was established by the Convention of Madrid, concluded July 3, 1880, as follows. Stop. So we, you just got a reference point. One of these days, we're going to go over, which we already did, I think in session one and two, we read the Treaty of 1880, it's called Madrid. The Treaty of Madrid, 1880, Article 15, we read it aloud. And it said that as soon as a black person wakes up and realizes they actually have a nationality of more, they can immediately proclaim their nationality and consent on the record with the Moorish government that they want to become back into the family, into the nation, into the state of Morocco. So they're pointing out right there, what is the solution? What's the remedy for these people call themselves black? If you want to be Moroccan again, you want to be a Moor again, you want to be Moorish again, i.e. you want to have your nationality back, Go to your Moorish government. Keep in mind, MPAC has a Moorish government. Mm -hmm. We have a state government on the record, for the record, by the people, for the people. Let's continue. 
So what's happening here? Now, he's going, you're going to read aloud Article 15 of the Treaty of Madrid. So what happened? The United States of America put the reference point right into this article. Let's read it. Go ahead, Mother. Article 15 of the Treaty of Madrid, 1880. Any subject of Morocco who has been naturalized in a foreign country and who shall return to Morocco shall, after having remained for a length of time equal to that which shall have been regularly necessary for him to obtain such naturalization, choose between entire submission to the laws of the empire and the obligation to quit Morocco, unless it shall be proved that his naturalization in a foreign country was obtained with the consent of the government of Morocco. Foreign naturalization heretofore acquired by subjects of Morocco according to the rules established by the laws of each country shall be continued to, to, them. to, to them as regards all its effects without any restriction. Stop. They just gave the Moors the answer to the test. Anybody thinks they're black? And anybody call themselves a Moor? You must follow the instructions. What are the instructions? What did they outline? Watch this. Any, any, any subject of Morocco who has been naturalized, Negro, Blacks, and Colors been naturalized, in a foreign country, what's the foreign country? United States of America is the foreign country. We've been naturalized by United States of America. Naturalization Act, 1870. Any Alien Act, 1798 and shall return to Morocco. You've returned in your mind, your state of mind. Listen, Morocco, you was already standing on it the whole time. It's like Dorothy. In the end, the witch told her, the good witch said, you always been home. You just bumped your head, Dorothy. Watch this. So once you come into the state of mind, that you have a nationality, you just immediately return to Morocco because you were already standing on it the whole time. Watch this. Christopher Columbus came here in 1492, according to their records. What was the name of the country before Christopher Columbus got here? Morocco. Can't nobody answer that question because everybody's been studying black history. February 1st, to February 28th. Black history is history that's dead history. Because there ain't no such thing as black people. But if you study history prior to 1492, you study history and understand who the Moors are, you know who Moors are. Black History Month is for black people. They're only going to tell you what happened to the, in the 60s. They're only going to tell you what happened in Oklahoma. They're only going to tell you about black history. They ain't going to tell you about Moorish history. Watch this. Taking it from the top. A subject of Morocco who has been naturalized in a foreign country and who shall return to Morocco shall, after having remained for a length of time equal to that which shall have been regularly necessary for him to obtain such naturalization, more has been naturalized at the very least since 1870. That's a length of time. Moors can choose between entire submission to the laws of the empire. Did it say country? No. Empire, which expands across continents and the obligations to quit Morocco. You're obligated to quit Morocco. I mean, you gotta let the Moroccan government know on the record, you wanna remain a United States citizen. Listen, that's your obligation. You just can't remain naturalized once you realize you're a Moor. Watch this. 
unless it shall be proved that his naturalization in a foreign country was obtained with the consent of the government of Morocco. So what's happening? Moors have woke up. They check in the first box. They proclaim their nationality. But now they got to go to the Moroccan government to put it on the record with the nation, with the state. Moors haven't done that yet. They just proclaim their nationality. Now they want to tell the colonists, I know who I am. I deserve my rights. The colonists saying, you haven't been following the instructions. Where's your Moroccan government? Not your self-appointed people. Show me your elections and your inauguration that was public. Where's your body politics of your state flag, provincial state flag? Your mother flag is the Moroccan flag. That flag is the world flag that represents Moors around the world that's been colonized. But you must also have your provincial flag, just like the 50 states franchisees of the United States of America. Each so-called state has its own flag, its own constitution, and its own state seal. So here in, at AMPAC, we have our own flag. We have our own seal. But we also pay honors to the mother flag. This is the E state, E state, the estate. E state, planet Earth, the flag, the mother flag of the world. That flag is the state flag. Provincial means a small portion of the estate. Okay? Go ahead, mother. But so that so if someone is claiming there that they are they all they have to do is claim that they are a Moorish national because there's not many states in the in the empire at this time would they have to go to whatever one is available could they do that you know even though they live outside of our territory. You know, our, our location. That's a good question. Latitude Mother. and longitude location. The best way to answer that question is the instructions are clear. Moors who wake up must go and put on the record <coughs> with a Moorish government that they had proclaimed their nationality. Right. In the empire. Empire is vast. That's the best way I can answer the question. Same way they presented it. So they would have to build their own government under the land that they reside on to become a national war. That would be preferred, but the empire is vast. So every provincial state that's created, let's use the 50 states of the United States of America Corporation jurisdiction as an example. If Moors will create a constitution and a state, because they all go together, it's an appendix of each other, and lay claim to each one of those so-called boundaries of each one of those states and say, this is a Moore state. So Utah will become a Moore state. Colorado has become a Moore state. New Mexico will become a Moore state. Arizona will become a Moore state. That would be the preferred method moving forward. However, until all these states come on board, then Moors can go to any state government of the Moroccan Empire and proclaim their nationality and get back to the East state through a state, provincial state, because it's still Moroccan government. AMPAC is a Moroccan government. I have another question for clarification. So mm -hmm. if I come from this government and let's say I move to Arizona or California, would I still be a party of this government? Or now that I've done moved to a different state, would I have to 
find a government within that state that I reside in? Okay, good question. So here's how I can answer it. First things first, you can't move to Arizona because Arizona is a fiction. Arizona is what you call a false extraterritorial jurisdiction on paper. It don't exist for real, for real. The land is Morocco. North America is the United States of Morocco, the country. The country is Morocco, North America. The overlay, that's a pretend overlay, is the United States of America. But it really don't exist because it's a shadow government, a shadow government. It's de facto. It don't exist. It's really the United States of, Amer of, of Morocco. It's really the United States of Morocco, the true country. So therefore, you can't go to Arizona. Arizona is a fiction, like Santa Claus. Once you come into the real knowledge, you know Arizona is a fiction, but a minor, a minority thinks that Santa Claus is real, and that's a fact. But the truth is, Santa Claus is a fiction. Arizona is a state. That's a fact. Listen. But in truth, it is a fiction. Because it's really Morocco. So for clarification, you're saying as I mentally become a national with the more, I would remove my thought process of the fictitious land that I think of me even residing here in Colorado. This is the land of Morocco. So even if I do decide to get up and move to another um, Morocco land, I wouldn't look at it as me moving to the state of California or the state of Arizona because it would still be the land of Morocco. So within that fact, then I wouldn't need another government because I would still be a part of the government that I'm a part of. Is that correct? That's 100% correct. Mm -hmm. All right. So therefore, Thank you for the clarification. you're welcome. Let's give you an example. If you was a citizen of Arizona, all caps, corporation, franchisee, claiming a false jurisdiction, well, you could always leave Arizona and travel to go to a different state, but you're still considered a citizen of Arizona, no matter if you go to Georgia. Unless you pledge allegiance to Georgia. How do you pledge allegiance to Georgia? You change your tags on your car and get a driver's license at the DMV. That's their way of on the paper. Mm -hmm. Legislation says as soon as you get a driver's license in a different fictitious state, that is your allegiance to that state. That's how it works. So therefore, to answer your question specifically, once you become a national of a provincial state government within the Moroccan Empire, you can travel abroad. But this becomes your original domicile where you can always come back to. Because you're already in Morocco, no matter where you go. That's the truth. They're telling you right here. Let's continue. All right, let's continue. Foreign naturalization heretofore acquired by subjects of Morocco according to the rules established by the laws of each country shall be continued to them as regards all its effects without any restrictions. Wait a minute. So Moors are nationalizing now. Black people are waking up and realize they have a nationality. I'm a Moor. They turn around and tell the United States, I'm a Moor. Wait a minute. Why isn't the United States respecting that? It says without any restrictions. Watch this. You must understand international law. International law says that you must have a state, a constitution that claims your latitude, longitude of your state, and you then can enforce the law through your state. That is the
the Vienna Convention of 1969, all the nations around the world, listen, agree that you must have a state that is Rotarian. That's what you call just cogents. Just cogents. Just cogents. Two words. Just cogents means the norms of international law that cannot be interrupted. What does that mean? Even Moors can't break the law. Moors have no choice but to create a state, and your state must have a constitution. And that's why the United States ignores Moors, because Moors ain't been following the instructions. So even though Article 15 says, without any restrictions, that article was in 1880. In 1969, the Vienna Convention which is all the nations came together and agreed that you must have a state in order to represent your people. So therefore, that created a restriction. Moors must have a state. Their nation come together as a body politic to create a state, and a state must have a constitution. Matriarchal council, your provincial flag, your seal, consular court, a lot of your land title, National trust, etc., etc., etc. The instructions are clear. Go to the Vienna Convention of 1969 and just simply read the preamble, Article 1 and Article 2. You must understand that. Let's continue. Continue to read, Mother. The above ruling has never yet been acted upon, and should this at any time be contemplated seriously, a large number of naturalized people, American and others, residing in Morocco, would be affected thereby. Stop. They're telling you the answers to the test of what's going to happen someday. This was written in 1906. We're in the 21st century now. Watch this. The above ruling. What ruling are they talking about? Article 15, that when these Moors wake up, they can claim their nationality and get back to their Moroccan government. As long as they have a state, constitution, what happens? The above ruling has never yet been acted upon. Moors never acted upon understanding international law to work through their state. Watch this. And should this at any time be contemplated seriously, when these Moors wake up, United States of America got to take it serious because they got obligations to what? Treaties. A large number of naturalized people, they didn't say persons this time, did they? They said people. Moors don't wake up, the people. American, who's American? The Moor, on the definition of American, 1828. American is the copper-colored people found here by the European. Mm -hmm. And now the word American is now applied to descendants of Europeans. See, these people that call themselves the United States of America, government representatives, they know they ain't American, and they know you ain't black. They know you're a Moor, and they know under the definition of American, you're the original American, even though you're standing on the land of Morocco. Watch this. American and others, so it's the others. Why? Because anybody who don't know their nationality is automatically it's so Jewer, Moorish, a Moor. Residing in Morocco. They're telling you now, the latitude and longitude, you're standing in Morocco, which is North America, commonly known as, but it's really Morocco, will be affected thereby. Okay, Mother, section four and five, please read. Residence in foreign parts does not affect the nationality of Moorish subjects. 
and the Moorish government has no means of protecting its subjects permanently residing in other countries. With the exception of a so-called Moorish Council at Gibraltar and a Moorish agent at Cairo, Cairo Egypt, mm -hmm. I am, etc. Hoffman Phillips. Mm -hmm. So Hoffman Phillips, excuse me, I said earlier Williams Hoffman Phillips. Hoffman Phillips. So watch this. Let's read it aloud. Section 4 and 5. Residence in a foreign and foreign parts does not affect the nationality of more subjects. So in other words, you're all born with a nationality no matter where you live. You have a nationality. You just didn't know it. Watch this. And the Moorish government has no means of protecting Excuse me, let me go back to the top. Residence of foreign parts does not affect the nationality of Moorish subjects. So everybody has a nationality. And the Moorish government has no means of protecting its subjects permanently residing in other countries. So what are they saying right there? Moors live all around the world. But more specifically, let's talk North America, commonly known as North America, which is really Morocco. We have permanent residence here. Because the Europeans found us here. This is our home. Watch this. With the exception of a so-called Moorish consul, Gibraltar, and a Moorish agent in Cairo, Egypt. So what's happening? They say Moors don't have no protection. Why don't Moors have protection? Because Moors were conquered. Moors didn't have their own state government no more. Here in northwest of Mexico, let me be clear. In northwest of Mexico, which is commonly known as North America, we didn't have protection. Why? Because our governments here were overthrown by the patriarchs and the colonists. And then the Converso Moors, the Cointel Pro Moors, and the Sellout Moors decided to join the colonists, overran the rest of whatever matriarchal councils that was left. Queen Khalifa of California. Queen Khalifa. California is named after Queen Khalifa. She was a Moabite Canaanite sister. A Moor. She was the last one to try to hold on to the land before the rest of North America was fully annexed. Before the rest of North America was fully colonized. Queen Khalifa was holding it down. She was the last Moor to fight. To hold it down for her nation, her state. We've been conquered. Now we don't have nobody standing up for Moors here in northwest of Mexico, commonly known as North America, that's being ruled by people that are chiefly British. So what's the solution? Moors have to use their pen to bring themselves back into the constitutional fold of government. That is the solution. You got to take back your land with a pen and your people, your population, through the mothers. Because once the mothers get this information, the game's over. Because these people are chiefly British. They have a slight fear of sisters. <laughs> always have, always will. So when the mothers wake up and put this pen in their hand, start to put together legislation, put together that constitution and that state and the bylaws of the officers that are going to be elected. The mothers put together that matriarchal council, which is a circle, which represents the eggs in your fallopian tubes. And y'all come together as one. You're the original human being of planet Earth. But now everything is ran from a political perspective. With a pen. So that ends the reading of what the United States of America, the states, and their state representatives know about you. They even wrote it in a book, etymology, that these people are black, 
are Moors. They write in, write in their house a representative documentation. These people call themselves black are Moors. Now wait a minute. We got to get an understanding. They say we lost our nationality because of the Naturalization Act. Watch this. Let's look up the definition of nationality to get an understanding. You can find the definition of nationality on page 1176. We're going to read it aloud and let the mothers read nationality aloud because only mothers create nationality in nations. Only mothers can create a state. Only mothers can ratify a constitution. Keeping in mind, your constitution is a birth record. So the mothers would like to read nationality. Just a moment, I'll put it up on the screen as well. Nationality. Nationality, the quality or character which, which arises from the fact of a person belonging to a nation or state. Stop. So remember, nationality, you must belong to a nation or state in order to proclaim your nationality. We just read that Moors must go back to a Moroccan government, a state, a nation. You can't just say you have a nationality. There's rules to the game. The game of what? How nations around the world have set up international law. Continue the reading, please. Nationality determines the political status of the individual, especially with reference to allegiance, while domicile determines the civil status. Nationality arises either by birth or by naturalization. According to saving Savigny, nationality is also used as opposed to territor territoriality. territoriality for the purpose of distinguishing the case of a nation having no national territory. So if it's self-explanatory, but let me break it down. Nationality determines the political status. Political status. You must use a pen. It's giving you the instructions right there. Of the individual, especially with reference to allegiance. You want to have allegiance? You must have a political status to what? A state. Watch this. While domicile determines his civil status. Continuing the reading. Nationality arises either by birth. So you're born with a nationality no matter what. But you then must use the pen to create the birth record. But what's the first birth record you need? Constitution. Constitution is the birth record of a nation by the mothers. It's a political document. Continuing. Nationality arises either by birth or naturalization. We learned about naturalization. You can be born a denizen, alien, or you can be born as a national, free national of your state. That's the choice. It's clear. According to Sabine, what is the mother? Savigny. It's Savigny. All right. Nationality, quote unquote, is also used as opposed to territoriality. So you need nationality in order to stop the colonist territoriality possession. They're trying to possess your land. So the antonym. The solution to the test to get the United States out of your land is your political status of your nationality, your constitution, and your state. That's the solution. Until then, the United States is going to stay put until more figure out the answer to the test based upon the Vienna Convention of 1969, Articles 1 and 2. How do you get full powers? You must be what's called a competent authorized representative. That's called elections, constitution, state, flag, seal, etc. Watch this. 
for the purpose of distinguishing the case of a nation having no national territory. So how do you make distinctions? There's only two distinctions. Colonized land or free land. Moors, which one do you want? Free land. Moors want free land. Okay, how do you do that? You must use your pen. The mothers must use their pen to create a state and a constitution because they're appendix. They go together. You can't have a constitution without a state. You can't have a state without a constitution. It's appendix. That's the 2X chromosome. That's mother. Now that we read nationality, we must understand what does nationality do? It creates a nation. How do you have a nation? First, you have to have a nationality before you have a nation. But you understand, nationality says you got to have a government status, polit politics. Watch this. Let's look up the definition of nation. That's on page 1175. Nation, a people. Stop. Nation is people. Continue. A people or a <laughs> aggregation of men. Aggregation of men. What does aggregation mean? The coming together. Existing in the form of an organized rural society. Continue. Usually inhabiting a distinct portion of the earth, speaking the same language, using the same customs, posing historic possessing. possessing. Put up. Possessing. Possessing historic continuity. Historic continuity and distinguished from other like groups by their racial origin and char characteristics and generally. Stop. Let's break it down real quick. A people, not persons. An aggregation of men. Aggregation means to come together. They slide in the word men, but what you must understand before a man, a man can become a man, he must be a son. Before he's a son, he's a fetus inside of his mother. So he can't be a man without his mother. Existing in the form of an organized jural society. What does jural mean? Law. Society. Law based upon a state. The state creates the laws. That's what jural means, a law society. Law means you have a constitution. Don't you always hear the United States of America citizens talking about their constitution is their law? Jural means law. Let's continue. Usually inhabiting a distinct portion of the earth. That's your provincial latitude, longitude portion of Mother Earth. Mother Earth is filled with a bunch of provincial state governments around the world. Everybody got a flag and a seal and a constitution all around the world. And Moors must have to do the same. We're no different. We have to maintain the law. Moors have to have their own flag too. Wait a minute. They say, it's the Moroccan flag. No, that's the mother flag. You got to move out of mama's house and get your own house. Eventually, we all do it. So your house represents your domicile, your provincial government. You must have a flag. The prophet Noah Ali said he gonna leave these Europeans here long enough to teach us government. Guess what the United States of America did? They got a flag and a constitution for each one of their 50 franchisees. Moors have to do the same. We ain't special. We got to stick to the law, the instructions. Create a state. So we got to have our portion of the earth. Speaking the same language, using the same custom, possessing historic continuity, and distinguished from other like groups by their racial origin, characteristics, and gender. That's simple. You must have your own state. Continue, Mother, with the reading of nation. Or statement? Yes, I have a statement. I just said that it just kind of irritates my 
my spirit that because we are the aboriginals, we are the law, and these imposters came over and just freaking confused us and made us incompetent, and now we have to fight back over with their lies and deceit, and now we have to write ourselves back in law, but we are law. It's in our blood. It's in our DNA. Yes, you're 100% correct. Mm -hmm. However, a slight thing I would add to what you said. You must always remember two things. Yes, you are the law. But you were conquered by two of your sons. The first son was your own and looked just like you. The conversal more, the cointel more, and the sellout more. The second son was what these people we call chiefly British, i.e. the Albions. And Albion is chiefly British. So your son that goes around calling himself the white people, that's your son too. He colonized you. So it's not just the colonists who did this. Your son that looked just like you did this to you too. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I am Gabonde Wase Bay. Haji.